Stay tuned for the biggest fish, the hottest bites, this week here on In-Depth Outdoors. Got it. Look at that. Wow, is that an incredible fish. Got him. Whoa, this is an absolute monster. <laughs> We're headed to the best ice fisheries from across the ice belt. We'll fish longer, punch more holes, and go further off the beaten path in search of the hottest bites on ice. Oh, that's... <laughs> what a specimen. Oh, look at the size of that. Look at that fish. <laughs> that is a monster bike. This is In-Depth Outdoors. Morning everyone, James Holst here with In-Depth Outdoors. Uh, we're in Nevis, Minnesota, which is right near Park Rapids. And what we're doing today is we're gonna answer the question we get so very often uh, from all of our viewers, which is, how do you guys find the bites that you end up featuring in the shows? And of course, you know, we've got a lot of ice fishing experience ourselves. Uh, there's a lot of bites that we rely on uh, from history that we include in the shows friends share some bites with us, but what we're gonna do today is really how we go about finding most of our bites. We do a lot of exploring. So it's Joel Nelson and I, Joel Nelson's uh, kind of our uh, in-house map guy, uh, always pouring through uh, fishing surveys, looking for great unexplored hidden gem type lakes. So that's what we're gonna do. We might hit up to three lakes today during today's show. Uh, we've got the Polaris XP900 track vehicle. Uh, get to play with that today get out some minimum maintenance roads, uh, definitely off-road uh, to explore some bodies of water that we would not be able to get to today uh, with our snowmobiles because there's just not enough snow up here yet. So uh, that said, let's talk about why we chose Park Rapids. Uh, here in the last week, uh, we've had a huge snowfall that went from southwest Minnesota up through the state, northeast to Duluth. So what we've done is we've gone slightly north and west of that band of snow because there's a lot of lakes in that area that had minimal ice and got dumped with up to 16 inches of snow. And that's a recipe for disaster when it comes to getting out on the ice. So Park Rapids, Minnesota, we're gonna explore up to three lakes. Uh, we're gonna be moving fast, looking for a variety of different bites and show you guys how we get on some great bites during the winter. Stick around. found an awesome one man water clarity 13 feet 22 acres only <laughs> what's the survey looks good man there's a pile of crappies 9 to 11 um, bigger size bluegills too um, looks like most of the population shifted towards the upper end uh, not many six to eights and quite a few nine to eleven inch fish and that's that's what we look for 22 acres is pretty nice <laughs> what's the access uh, it just says carry in access through Forest Service Trail. So we can take the Polaris. Got it? Yep, no, I'll do. These rods in that other case, and we're good. All right, let's roll. I'm going to start drilling. I've got two fish there. That's my jig. One just dropped back down to the bottom. I'm going to go into zoom here and uh, drop it into five foot mode. Open that up a little bit. Zoom window, five foot. Bunk. What are you there? What, uh, 26 feet. How deep you over there, Joel? 24. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh my gosh, what happened? Three fish just all of a sudden blazed in. Here we go, coming high. 
Here they come. A lot of false charges. <laughs> I want it, I want it, I want it. No, I don't, no, I don't. You still got them on your, uh, your flasher there? Yeah, but there was three of them that literally swam in all at once and all charged it at once. They come in up off the bottom or they come bottom. in? Bottom. Gotcha. Here we go, here we go. Oh, you got him, Joel. And yes, you are my type. She's, nice. she's just your type, Joel. Oh, first fish of the day, beautiful crappie, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, we've been seeing them come in, a number of marks off the bottom, rising up, and this fish just came up and came up. It raced all the way off bottom and took it. <laughs> so when they make it easy for me, I tell you what, I'm never gonna complain, so beautiful crappie. All right, beautiful fish. It's a little cold out this morning. We don't want those fins to freeze. Um, look at that fish, just. Fills the hole and gives me a kick and gone. Boy, I tell you what, it's been a while since I fished that rat soap and uh, I really studied it for a little bit right in the hole, just jigging it real light just to see what kind of flicker I could get. And that's really what enticed that fish to bite the first time. The second time, pure luck. <laughs> you, you had him angry. He was mad about it. He didn't like missing it the first time, apparently. <laughs> Since 1946, StrikeMaster has held to a simple idea. If you build an auger that makes less work out of drilling holes, people will have more fun ice fishing. StrikeMaster's two-stroke solo series provides unmatched cutting speed in a lightweight design. New this winter, StrikeMaster unveils their Honda-powered four-stroke auger. The Honda 35cc light tears up the ice with reliable Honda power. StrikeMaster ice augers. Visit us online today to find the StrikeMaster auger that's right for you. Here we go. All right. Joel, I got another good one sitting down there too. They just don't travel in singles very often. This, I mean, really it's what I love about crappie fishing. Sometimes they can be just buggers to find, but once you find them, they never seem to be alone. You know, and these, these ratzos, that's where you catch just about every fish, right there in the snoot. That hook gap is just perfect to come out and around that little thin, hard plate that runs on the outside edge of those crappies. So it gets between that and what they call the paper part of the paper mouth, hooks them up every time. Not a huge fish by any means. See you later, little guy. Off you go. Oh, hooked up. Oh. <laughs> I, I, uh, I chanced it. I, I took my glove off there to get a better handle on the reel and uh, just about lost that fish for, for that little trick. Is it the right kind of fish? Joel? I think so. He f oh, yes, he is. Beautiful crappie. The way these horizontal baits hang, these ratzos, when you stick them, it's right in the roof of the mouth. Yep. Did he have any buddies with him? No, this was uh, this was kind of a, a lone rider. Uh, I think more reminiscent of a you know midday fish. You know, one of those ones we'll have to work for. But if they're like this, I don't mind. Stick and move as we have to, right? Yep. No doubt on it, though. He just lit, came right in. It's all about finding the right one, man. The fish I'm catching are very aggressive, Joel. I mean, there's no doubt about that. I got three of them down there now. Here we go. You got a hole nearby, James? Here they come, man. School of them. Racing off the bottom. There we are. You know, I had my pick between about five fish there. I don't know that I got the biggest one. <laughs> and that's what a good crappie bite reminds me of, is just a screen loaded with fish. And I'm gonna make hay while the sun shines here. I'm literally gonna drop this fish and get right back down. Cause there is a pile of them down there. Something about crappies that are just comfort. I don't know, I don't know what it is. I think, uh, I think one of my earliest experiences ice fishing was for crappies. Wow, they just moved through and here we go again. Boom, three fish, less than three minutes. Man, that's fun. Oh, come on. Ooh, oh, come on, you're crosswise on the hole, buddy. Just killing me. There we go. Very cool. Oh, these fish are eating stuff in the mud because this one's got and some bugs or something still stuck in his jaw from what he was eating last. These are nice crappies, James. Yes, indeed. And spunky.
The one that keeps playing peekaboo. Yeah. It's quick though. I think it's he acts a lot like that bastard. Well, a decision's been made. Uh, Joe and I have been talking about, do we stay here on this crappie lake? I mean, we've got a very nice group of fish going, but we're just not seeing the ultimate top end size that we're looking for. And what we're thinking is, we're probably gonna see a real good big fish bite right around dark. And uh, of course the decision now is, do we want to wait until dark and waste the rest of our day uh, when we could be off on another lake looking for another bite? And so we both agreed that instead of wasting that last three, four hours of the day, we're gonna head to a different body of water. We're gonna go south and east, it's actually going to be kind of on that edge of that snow line we've been talking about today. It's set back in state forest land. There's really not a uh, public access per se in this body of water, but there is a trail that will get us down there. The Polaris will do the hauling, of course. So what we're looking for on this new body of water are some big bluegill. So we're going to get this thing on the trailer. We're going to get loaded up and get on down the road. 45 minutes from now, uh, we should be back on that little lake. Give us plenty of time to find another bite on another body of water. You know, the key to this deal, to keep it, making it worthwhile to move from lake to lake, is just being able to load, unload so quickly. I mean, that wasn't five minutes total. ATV on the uh, trailer, otter in the back of the truck, everything in the cab that needs to be in the cab, and off we go. You know, we'll spend the extra time out there punching holes, and where you really lose time is if you're moving stuff around, reorganizing, unloading. But the way this system works, it's just dialed. This winter, start seeing red. Visit MarkhamTech.com and this winter, start seeing red. Mind if I fish with you guys? No, but if you're using custom jigs and spins lures, you better get a bigger bucket. With custom jigs and spins, new tungsten heavy metal jigs, you'll get down to the big ones quickly and catch more and bigger fish. These jigs have been designed by world-renowned Croatian ice fisherman Czechai Matten. Czechai number one with Czechai lures fishing. Go Czechai, go! So when you use custom jigs and spins, try the new tungsten heavy metal ice jigs. Custom jigs and spins, the hottest bait below the ice. I love this thing. Coming down. All right, let's roll. I tell you what, there's something about checking out these little bodies of water. You know, getting there is half the fun. It was a cool trek back in here in the Polaris. A completely different scenery now. We're inside that snow line we talked about earlier. If you look at the trees, everything's just covered in snow now. Uh, we feel fairly comfortable though. Uh, this body of water that we're fishing here is tiny. I mean, this is it. If you look over my shoulder, what you see, that's all of it. Uh, so this kind of lake is gonna freeze quickly and we've got more than enough ice to support us and the Polaris. But uh, this is one of those lakes we've wanted to fish for a long time. Great bluegill survey numbers on this body of water. Real good chance at some nine plus inch fish and we're really excited about checking it out. Well, Joel, I'm gonna make some noise. There we go, that feels better. Boy, it was a great mark, acted different. I was worried it was a, it could be a bass. Holy cow, <laughs> not a bass, just fought like one. <laughs> Woo! Do a dance, Joel, yay! I, I want to, man, this is why we work hard and look at surveys and drive into the way, way back. That's just awesome. I. From the tip of my thumb to the tip of my pinky is nine inches straight. I give that thing a tail pinch. She's 10, man. I'll take a couple of those. These are such a rare fish. And to come back here on a day like today, to work so hard to find these spots, check out a whole bunch of them and to, to hit pay dirt like this. What'd you get that man. fish on, Joel? Uh, I got it on a slender spoon, but this fish took its own sweet time in doing everything that it did. It didn't swim up fast. 
it, it didn't even fight fast. <laughs> it, uh, it's a different species altogether in my book. Just a true gem of the resource. When you can lay a fish like that in your hand and it comes up your wrist that far, man, that's a beautiful fish. There he goes. James, today has been a success in my book. Just knowing that a lake like this can hold fish like that makes all the difference in the world. It tells me there's gonna be more. And it also tells me that everything is perfect about this situation. Low pressure, the survey report, tells us what we need to see. There's good fish in here, obviously good forage, just the right conditions. Um, this is gonna be a lake that I hope to come back to and reproduce that again and again and again. All right, who wants a piece of me? Anyone? Well, oh, you're digging in. Don't be a bass. Oh yeah, Joel. What does he go, nine? Oh, he won't go nine, but he's a step in the right direction. Pretty fish. Fisheries information has always been an important part of the way I fish. And back in the day, I used to spend a lot of time sending emails, even phone calls to the DNR and the different states that I would fish to get those surveys and reports and get that fisheries information. But now, it's gotten a whole lot easier. I'm using something called the Minnesota DNR Lake Finder mobile app on my smartphone, and it's absolutely free. And it's put everything right at my fingertips. Survey information, reports, along with maps, lake bottom, contours. There's just a host of information out there for you. So when I'm looking at these surveys, and in this case, I'm looking at bluegill lakes, there's two kinds of fishery statistics posted on these reports, trap net surveys and gill net surveys. On the gill net surveys, they show measurements of the fish, and that nine to 11 inch range for gills is wonderful. Now, conversely, if you're looking at a survey and it's heavily, heavily focused with large numbers of fish in that six to eight inch range or much smaller, that tells you a lot of times that stunting has happened on that lake. So a lot of times we're looking for bluegill lakes that don't have a lot of fish in them, but what fish are in them are skewed towards that upper edge, that nine to 11 inch range. And I tell you what, that's exactly how we found this lake we're fishing today. At Otter Outdoors, we're committed to building a tougher, stronger, smarter line of ice shelters. Tougher is our roto-molded sleds, known for their legendary strength and durability. Stronger is our anodized square tube frame, oversized and substantially stronger than round tubing. Smarter is our fully sewn and quilted insulated Pro Series and Wild Series thermal shells, and a complete line of smarter accessories. This winter, let Otter Outdoors unleash the tougher, stronger, smarter ice angler in you. You know, this whole thing we do, the running around, checking lakes is kind of cool. Of course, the diesel bill looks like a mortgage. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> it's not good. Yep, there he is. God, they're biting so light. He was on there for, I think, a little bit. <sighs> Feels pretty good. It was a good mark when it came in. We've got so many bass in here. That's not a bass. Holy cow. <laughs> that is girth. Can you see that? <laughs> That is a thick fish and it's long. Oh my goodness, that is such a long fish. Here, I'm gonna size that thing up. Yeah, I got over 10 inches. Over 10 inches on this fish. My, my biggest gill so far this year, over 10. I'm thinking it probably goes 10 and a quarter, maybe even 10 and a half. I don't have anything to measure them with me. Whew. Well, a fish this big, a fish this old, deserves nothing but the best. And we practice what we preach here when it comes down to it. This is a precious resource, and I want to make sure this fish gets back, uh, you know, swim around, maybe get bigger. Maybe next time I'm back, he's going to be even bigger. Maybe he's going to be, maybe he's going to beat that 11 inch personal best that I got going, but wow. Oh, hey. Keep the drag tight. <laughs> Just a little guy fighting like an animal. Joel, you caught all the good ones. <laughs> They're down there, just a matter of where. I don't know if it's closed on us or if we just need to move a little bit. Here we go. Oh, this guy is coming like a race car. Thump. Thump? <laughs> was that a double thump? It is a double thump. <laughs> that was uh, some synchronized hitting right there. Oh, and it's a nice fish. Good for you. Not a giant, but uh, we keep raising the bar here just a little bit. We're kind of at that point of the day where we're starting to see some failing light. Fish are getting a lot more aggressive. I mean, these fish are just charging up off the bottom. Such a cool sight. Nice fish. Here comes another one. Boom. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, we might have us a real one. Man. <laughs> I think we got Mr. Bass. <laughs> no, Gill, and a nice one. He's the drag burning Gill. <laughs> very, very, very respectable fish. Let that guy go. Hey, buddy. Man, you've got it going on over there. Well, Joel, here's what I've learned about ice go. fishing today. Which is? I'm gonna put it in a baseball analogy. Okay. Lake number one with the crappies was a hard single that almost made the gap. Sure. That, that could end up being a pretty cool bite. We just gotta find those bigger fish. Right. This bluegill deal here, I'd say this was a ringing <laughs> double off the base of the wall. How about that? <laughs> It's pretty darn good, man. I tell you what, this is the kind of thing I, I live for. And Lake hopping is cool. It is. And to know that this gem is back here for us to come back to, should we ever so decide to, uh, it's a good feeling all around. That is a very nice bass you have there, Joel. Not really. <laughs> I was hoping you didn't notice. <laughs> he was a funny green color. Here comes one. Oh, is he aggressive? He's just streaking. When you're bluegill fishing, here's my jig right here, it's dropping down. What I have here are two really nice marks, one on the bottom there, just a thick band of red. That's what it's all about. When you drop your transducer in the hole or after you unhook a fish and you drop your jig back in the water, that's exactly what you want to see. There's a couple in there now. I want that big one. You see that big thick mark of red down there? That's the one I want. Of course, what usually happens is one of his little buddies ends up streaking in and taking the bait instead. Yep, here comes one of his little buddies. Keep away, keep away. Speaking of what you want to see, I'm not seeing it, so. Nice. Woo! No bass, no bass, no bass. No bass, no bass. Is he the one? I don't know if he's the one or not. Oh yeah, a nice fish. They are just so incredibly feisty. There we go, again. Joel, not the biggest fish we've had today by any means. Gorgeous fish and just hyper aggressive. I just love watching that jig fall like that and then just seeing those bluegills just dart up off bottom. <laughs> nice guy. Joel, you got one too? I had a big one going. I'm gonna give him a free pass. I bet you we'll be back again here uh, a time or two this winter. What do you think? No doubt, absolutely. I don't want to leave this hole, it's been so good. We still got to get through the woods, bud. Yeah, we do. We got to be thinking about how we're going to get out of here. <laughs> I mean, we, we got a trail, obviously, but probably don't want to push it till dark, dark. No, when it gets dark, dark, everything becomes way tougher. Yeah, what do you say, bud? Like you said, with that failing light, we're just getting fish that uh, can't make heads or tails of the bait, seem disinterested, and I think that's our cue, my man. It is. Well, with that, we're gonna close the show. We got a really cool ride back through the woods to get out to the main road. And before we go, I just wanna wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. From Ben Brennigan behind the camera, Greg Huff, Joel Nelson, myself, Ben Larson back in the editing studio, Brian Clewitter, uh, sales guy behind the desk, and all the In-Depth Outdoors Pro Staff guys that make this show possible. We all wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Let's go perch fishing tomorrow. After I catch this last fish. Last fish, buddy. You just don't <laughs> quit, do you? Oh! <laughs> Swing and a miss. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> We're out of here, bud. For more info on the latest fish reports, gear recommendations, and hottest techniques, connect with us online at indepthoutdoors.com or follow us on Facebook at Indepth Outdoors. And if you enjoyed today's show, be sure to let our sponsors know.